So, folks, when we started this show about four years ago, Russell and I, as former theater people, were probably expecting the audience to be anywhere from 40 to 63 people per episode. And so it was. Yeah, and so it was for a while. But I think the fact that Russell and I both got started as theater people is part of what caused us to endure during those first couple of years where we had basically no audience. And we had more than, we had, you know, a couple hundred listeners per audio podcast. We really didn't start the YouTube game until about a year ago. Um, but for the first few years, we were basically a blog and an audio show. And the first handful of episodes, we literally had maybe 60 to 80 listeners per show. And they say the magic number for podcasting is seven. They say if you make it past your seventh episode, you're on your way. They say a vast majority of podcasts call it quits after episode seven because most podcasts just kind of sputter and fail to get going. And the hosts sort of get discouraged after those first seven episodes when not many people are listening. But the thing well, you that, have to understand that, that, would be, that would be like a funny parody of like the rock biopic, like a like a seven episode podcast about how the personalities clash and it all oh, falls yeah, right. apart. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! This is my <laughs> life. I'm not fucking around here. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But we as theater people are used to putting on shows for. 10 people, 15 people, 20 people. You know, when you rent a theater, or in Russell's case, when he owned a theater, 50 people in the house was a big night. That was a good night. That's a full house. That's a high stakes show. And so even when we had 50 to 70 to 80 people listening per episode, I know my attitude was, well, if we rented a theater and said, hey, tonight at 8 p.m., two schmucks are going to come talk politics. If 80 people showed up, we'd feel pretty good about that. We'd be pretty pumped backstage. We're like, all right, full house. Let's go kill it. And that's what kept us going in those early days. And now here we are at 5,000 YouTube subscribers. So we wanted to make this video to just say a very special thank you to everyone who has joined us on this little journey of ours, whether you just subbed uh, today or whether you've been with us from the start back in the old Facebook days when we were doing Facebook live stream videos Thank you all so much. Thank you, of course, to our Patreon members and our paid Substack subscribers. You guys are the backbone of the show. We say it every time, and we mean it. You guys made this whole thing happen. We could not have done this without your help. And so we thought we should just come on here and say a very quick thank you. Yeah. Um, Keaton thinks I was as unsuccessful as he was as a theater artist. I, I had a, I had 100 people by the time I exited, so... So you had Ooh. so wait a minute. So you had because I didn't know this. You it was a hundred is is considered off broad. No, I was doing like like by the time I exited the scene, I was I was doing like yeah, between a hundred and a hundred and fifty. Okay, so then you were an yeah, off Broadway yeah. producer. You were by the time I exited, I was an off Broadway producer. Okay, so for those who don't know, because people come to New York and one of the most frequently asked questions about the theater when we're taking them through Times Square and pointing to the theater, they say, what's the difference between off-Broadway and Broadway? Most people think it has to do with the location of the house. It's actually not the location of the house, but the capacity of the house. Yeah. So yep. an off-off-Broadway theater is 0 to 99 seats. An off-Broadway theater is 100 to 499 seats. And then a Broadway house is 500 or more. I always assumed Russell was, yes, as unsuccessful as I was. I'm feeling a bit threatened. I'm, I'm, feel, I'm feeling a little intimidated now. So you were an off-Broadway I, I, I was, was off producer. That's pretty good. I was at it a lot longer than you were, I'm sure. We have uh, live streams uh, every Thursday night at 8 o'clock, every Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Those are Eastern Time. We're here on YouTube. We're also on Rumble, Rockfin, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. So you can follow us all over there. Uh, tomorrow, if you're watching this tonight when we uh, drop this video, it's Wednesday, February 1st. Tomorrow, we have a really fun show in store. We're going to be talking some of that new Crystal and Kyle video that I just saw surfaced on the RBN broadcast. That's quite something. Insane. That's Insane. right in our wheelhouse. That's right in our yeah. wheelhouse. We'll have a lot of fun yeah. with that. And then Jimmy Dore on Tucker Carlson. And then Glenn Greenwald interviewed this German sort of populist politician who apparently, from what I understand, is speaking a lot of the language that we sometimes speak about, you know, uniting certain left and right 
factions. I'm only about 20 minutes in. I have to watch the rest of it, but we might be covering that tomorrow as well if I find that that's worth covering, which I suspect I will. Thank you so much. In all seriousness, you guys are awesome. Thank you for helping us reach this milestone. We'll see you back here at 10,000, and we'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. All right, all right. I'm, I'm ready. I'm re- Courage! No, there we go. The, see, now that we've work. gone pro, he's got to he's got to hit his cues. I got to hit my mark. It still doesn't work. I'm gonna have to find something else. All right. Well, you think about that, and I'll research the show tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Sincerely. Thank. Thank you. you. Please clap.